Mr. Fortune, thank you so, so much. I know how busy you can be, and this is at no small cost to you in terms of time, in terms of uh, resources that are scarce. So, so grateful to you. To you. Mr. Amos Oladimeji, with the um, prayer slots this night, can you please just share with us a short, brief prayer for about a minute, helping us to thank God that we are able to do this and commit all we are going to be learning into God's hands. Then we will go to introductions from there. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for this opportunity you have given unto every one of us. We thank you for the gift of life that no man can give. We thank you for the wisdom you have uh, given to our uh, tutor. We thank you for the wisdom you have given to the convener of this platform. We thank you for everybody that will be part of this program today. We thank you because everything we are going to learn today is will be permanent and you will help us to build on them and it will be beneficial to our lives and our profession. Thank you, Everlasting Father. Thank you because of us, our prayer. We pray, O Lord, for those who will still be part of this, that you will bring them here safely in the mighty name. Amen. I amen that amen. highly. Okay, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Amos. Thank you for the honor of joining us. And to everyone who have joined us tonight, we truly, truly appreciate your coming in. Um, there's something you need to do so that we know where you're joining us from. We will not be able to open the mics for everyone to speak. But if you use the uh, chat box, just drop your name, your church, and location. I know we have people from across Nigeria and some joining us from abroad. Please drop your name, your church name, your full name, your church name, and your location in the chats. Let's meet you there. And um, okay, to start off, we will start by introducing the uh, Church Media X. Uh, Brother Dura, please help me have the bio ready for Mr. Fortune. Okay, let me quickly introduce to us Church Media X. So, maybe a year or two before, I had been thinking of something like this for us to have a platform, a community, and a forum where we can have church media folks meet together and share, learn together, inspire ourselves, and, you know, brush ourselves up. Iron sharpens iron. That's what the Bible says. So, I was thinking about it. Uh, unfortunately, my brother Adura was also thinking about it. We met at a house on the rock one time. He just came around to volunteer. He's a wonderful person. He just came to volunteer in house on the rock. And I spoke to him about it. He said, oh, let's give it a shot. That's how we started. We started from just two of us to get the whole thing going. We started praying for a couple of months. Then after a while, we opened up the prayer meeting to all the people. Then from there, we've grown to all that we've done now. I think we've covered about 15 to 20 uh, bi-weekly forums now. All thanks to God and to the hard work of my co-founder, uh, Brother Adura, and a lot of people that have supported us going um, along the journey. Uh, we are connected to a lot of brands right now in their, in their scores. Uh, we've touched uh, about... 300 to 400 churches right now. Uh, there was a time we were compiling the list. That is huge. So um, our footprint is increasing by the day. And this forum today, we came about it from speaking with our, our dear brother, Mr. Fortune. He's been part of the experience uh, production for about five to seven years now. And in and out, we've spoken about these things. And fortunately, we were able to lock him down for this particular one. He's expensive, he's scarce, he's uh, very, very much in demand, but he has um, honored us with his skill set, his experiences, his trainings to come in tonight and just bless us. So I want us to... Um, Say a wonderful welcome to him, even though I have to still read his uh, bio. Ha, look at it. 
over 15 years, this man has been a driving force in broadcast engineering. So if you mention, if you go on the street now, just shout broadcast engineering. Try it. You will see, it's his name that's going to come up. <laughs> I'm joking. But that man is almost the face of broadcast engineering in Nigeria. Shape is shaping the way we consume media. He's a unit supervisor. Um, he ensures flawless broadcasts in even the most challenging environments. When I say the most challenging environment, I'm saying sometimes in the forest, sometimes on hills, sometimes on mountains. He has made things work. Um, capturing every moment with precision. His journey as an OB, uh, that's an outdoor broadcast engineer, is marked by mastering on-the-fly troubleshooting, guaranteeing success with each broadcast, from overseeing technical operations at prestigious events like the FIFA World Cup. You need to meet him in person to really appreciate him. But from what he's saying tonight, you, you, you have a taste. With an innate flair for innovation and an unwavering commitment to pursuing boundaries, is poised to redefine possibilities in media. More than just a broadcast engineer, he's a storyteller, problem solver, trailblazer, and each pro uh, project is an opportunity to push boundaries and redefine what's possible in media. Okay, let me not bore us with all of the details. I am happy. I'm Super excited to welcome to the Church Media Professionals by Weekly Forum tonight and to present to you to some and reintroduce to others Mr. Fortune Upong as he takes us on an amazing journey tonight. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Let's type your welcome in the comment section. Please unmute your mic and you have the floor, sir. Uh, good evening, all. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, sir. Uh, experience. And we spoke about something like this. Yes. You know, it's uh to me right now, you know, this this is a seed. This is the seed. You know, yeah. that's you know, if if we think in terms of the way people that let's let's say how great things have come, hmm. you know, great you, you can only tell the mark of a great thing by how how much it outlives uh the seed. It outlives the planter always. Hmm. You know, hmm. every great thing, people, country, events that we know, most of the people that brought it to be are not here yeah. so mm. and that is the sort of uh sacrifice that i don't know sadly is very scarce in this mm. side of the world you find out people plan here here people plan only for what they will eat tomorrow and next if you tell them about mm. the next one year they will look at you funny but yeah abroad in the mostly white skinned people let me put it that way they plan mm. they plan for the next three generations they plan ah how do i do this and hand this on how do i pay this yeah. forward because at the end of the day it's it's not about what you have today, but what you've left behind behind for others to thrive on. A, mm. a good example would be the guy that invented the fridge or refrigeration mm. as we know it today. Do you know air conditioning started uh, due to the need to dry paper? Mm. The guy just came was told, hey, we need to dry paper to make more money so we can sell more newspapers. So he went in, thought about it, invented something that will make the air colder or hum uh, less humid. Papers dry quickly. Factory worker has found out it was quite comfortable. So, and here we are today, countless number of lives saved from 
And no, you know, the thing is, you might think, ah, this is a thankless job. How am I going to sacrifice things to people like that and not enjoy? Trust me, mm. when your great, 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 great grandchild is benefiting from it, you will not be around, but somewhere a prayer will reach you. Trust me. A prayer sure. will reach you. And then sure. in, in that prayer itself, wherever you are, spiritually it will touch you and I tell you it's better than money. Very true. From personal Very true. experience. Okay. Very true. Okay, uh, sorry. I wanted to ask you a question before you quickly uh, delve into what we have for today. How did you come yes. about this, uh, your journey in the um, broadcast media profession? Uh, it, <laughs> As, where did this start from? How did you get into it? Because I know there are a lot of people on the uh, on the forum tonight who are also thinking, should I, should I not? What am I going to do with my life? Am I... Am I a photographer? Am I a uh, bishop? Because you mean that you've been a mechanic, carpenter, and all of that. So yes. How did you uh, well, get? Ah, <laughs> uh, my my life journey. Well, each time I look at it, well, I I thank God, you know, it, it, hmm. Primarily, the fact that I wish everyone could have, it's like you've been on a ride, you've come down, you've gone on it again, enjoyed it, and you come down, you still see the same people waiting for their turn, not they, and they don't even know the door. That's how I feel. I wish everybody could have that sort of joy from life as I have. I mean, wow. I, I learned my first uh, lesson in physics from a Korean uh, tutor. And he gave me my first lessons in uh, mathematics. A Japanese taught me chemistry. That's how lucky I've been. And these, these started at... Uh, so do in JSS one, but that one didn't even those ones more or less came like you were walking at Mobomoya and you find out it's mm. you know you are the square peg in the square hole. Wow. But the thing is, you know, I, I fell into broadcast, let me say by accident, you know, and it's not the type that you fall in and start dusting yourself. You mm. fall in and you're like, oh, I think I'm quite suited for this. I I, I like this. Because wow. when I finished uh, from Yaba Tech, uh, a friend of mine, you know, came and like, ah, Fortune, there's one place. Uh, they fix uh, stuff there. I think, uh, in, in, and you know what? Let's let's rewind a bit further because the, yeah. it gets interesting. Because first of all, I wanted to be a medical doctor. Wow. Yes, through and through. Medical doctor, doing surgeries, saving lives. So the way results. It was one day my dad came and like, ah, you've not filled your Yabatek form. I said, Daddy, I don't need it. Yabatek does not do medicine. I thought they did. Uh, but yeah, okay, we do that. So what did you, you said medicine. I said, yeah, so. Yeah. And he said, oh, come. You, you like tinkering with electronics and helping people out for free. Why don't you just look for a course that makes sense? And so I just decided to apply for it. The exam came. You need a, a poly jam came. I, I did it. Passed. Hmm. So when the time came, my mom said, hey, go and do the 
registration. I'm like, I'm waiting for Uniland. I'm waiting for, I go there almost every week, like almost a year, nothing. In the meantime, I was already taking lectures at uh, Yabatek. So hmm. only to find out, you know, uh, almost finishing my first semester, the letter came that I should come and read medicine. I just threw it aside. And you enjoy doing it. So after that, after HND and a whole lot of experience, uh, one day a friend came and said, ah, there's one place, they fix things there. They need guys like you. Uh, why are you going to look for a job again as uh, trying to do one thing to get paid? Go there, fix things for them. They will pay you. That was a flying dog, Sonny. So I okay. did a few... Uh, months with them. There I met uh, a few nice guys, a bunch of uh, Indians and hmm. two British guys. You know, there I got extensive training in electronics. So since I, I read the Electelet in Yabatek. So, okay. and then my further background, way back, I started life as a mechanic because where I grew up, you had to assemble a car to sell for a living or sell parts. Wow. So if you come to if you come down to Suru Larry, so wow. you know, further on I now was it one day after leaving uh, Flying Dove Nigeria. A friend came with a very serious problem. He had broken a camera. So I now like, ah, come, I don't fix these things. I only do electronics for cars, TVs, for people, you know. And he said, ah, I should help him. I should help. But if he doesn't, this uh, uh, Nollywood guy would kill him that it's a brand new camera the first shoot and everything he said okay no problem it was a challenge I decided to you know how would I put it uh, take the bull by the horn hmm. so at the end of the day I, I ended up fixing it so and there my journey into broadcast uh, engineering started because if I can roll back here yeah, I touched a few cameras but they were oh and it was just being taken over by DV and mini DV where you yeah. had a uh, pinnacle uh, capture cards that's like uh, 90 that was a long time ago. <laughs> you, you had a pinnacle capture card. You had a Idios system. Mm -hmm. You had a Firewire. Firewire was just like brand new. Yes. Then you had to capture with uh, uh, this uh, yellow, red, and white uh, analog thing to video, to edit. Wow. Them. Even before wow. then, there was uh, linear editing where mm. you had three decks and something that looked like a typewriter that you roll and mm. then you had a an audio mixer that was how the nollywood guys uh made uh videos then all this wow. uh naked the pretty serpent they were cut linear wow. not uh, non-linear they were cut linear like three you had three decks mm. an audio mixer mm. and so you to give credit to those guys because with they in in my own eyes they walked to the moon hmm. where the Americans were employing rockets they walked to the moon yeah so I mean by great effort they put us where we are right now because hmm. I know how many people struggled to bring in cameras back then that were worth over a million. 
way back in the 90s and mm. basically lost them in transit and had wow. to go back, earn money and get it here. So wow. such is their sacrifice. So after that, you know, I edited two movies and a musical. Then, you know, there was no there was no looking back. I mean, to cut the whole story short, there was yeah. no looking back. From wow. the mechanic who wanted to be a doctor to a broadcast engineer doing television. <laughs> Interesting. I, I hope uh, I hope someday I get to <laughs> do do something <laughs> about it. Get out of your story. Very very interesting. Very very interesting. Okay, so um, I think having um gone through that background, please just give me a moment. I want to quickly acknowledge some people that have joined us. Please drop mm. your your name, your church, and your location. Okay, I have Mr. Huemi Steven, Mountain of Fire Miracle Ministries, UK. You're welcome. Uh, Brother Imos Oladimeji, the Vineyard Assembly Incorporated, Ibadan. Thank you. You're welcome. Ebuka is a God's Royal Assembly, Delta State. Mr. Adam Michael, what feast Glorious Center, Lagos. Oni Emmanuel Olalekon. Thank you, brother, for joining. FBC Ijago Kwara State. Okay. Mr. Afwe Kem Afwe Kame Israel. Go for me to Nigeria. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my brother Joseph Okeo. Okay, everyone else can hear me. I think it's from your hand. Try uh from your end. Try to um resolve. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Okay, sir. I want to ask about the broadcast media. Uh, profession in Nigeria. You know, we've spoken about how teach and what can be done about that. Please give us a mm. brief overview of the industry um, and how this profession is key to advancing the industry, not just in Nigeria, in Africa and across the world, but how we still have that shortage in Nigeria. Uh, well, from my perspective, you know, okay, let, let me give you a picture of um, what, uh, how I see things. I'm, I'm looking from a third perspective here. A lot of people outside uh, Nigeria would see it and say, mm, Nigeria is a ripe place for growth, you know, mm. very ripe, lots of space to grow. But then if you flip the, the coin, you find out Nigeria is not exactly a right place. Nigeria is a place where nothing has, in fact, I would say things have regressed because we were on, a, on, on an upward uh, spiral. If, mm. if we go back, if we rewind to the time of uh, the Peter Eagles of NTA, mm. even further back to the time of the Hubert uh, Ogundes, we were yes. making film. We were employing world-class methods to make film. We were at par, you know, with mm. the Hollywoods of today. We're back then. So, mm. you know, we went forward up to a point we stopped and then now went back to zero. So wow. to now find out, you know, to find a... Uh, look at where we are. You have to take our whole, our whole story from zero. So you have a better idea and picture of how we are now. Because mm. we certainly there's proof that the capacity is there. What's not proven is how we can use that capacity to match up with what's happening elsewhere around the world and now mm. a lot of people may say yes uh, it's the tools uh, we don't have the tools but then i tell you if you pack container loads of 8k cameras cook lenses uh, broadcast lenses ob vans 
mean to say, you will now find out another factor will come up. Hmm. There is nobody to man these things. You know, hmm. is is if it's reflective in every other aspect of our lives today. We don't have things because there's nobody to use them. Think of you have a, a Formula One car, but you don't have a driver. Another person will now stand and tell you, hey, where's the roads where you want to drive this thing? And mm. another one will tell you from experience, do you need to even drive that fast? Would you even appreciate why these guys drive that fast? Mm. You know, so... The state we are now is one of where, apart from there is no one to do certain things, there is no tool to do those things. Then three, there is also, there is no attitude. If, let's say, abilities are they even there in a country where well, i wouldn't say in a country I'd, I'd say in a in a climb where we haven't uh how to in, inculcated or imbibed the culture of being on time hmm. you know but we want to watch uh we all queue up when we know nigeria is playing uh, one country have we ever wondered or appreciated that these people don't miss? They don't, in fact, the latest I've seen a game is 10 seconds from the blow. I've watched Champions League for years. The latest a, a game has kicked off 10 seconds from the wow. zero, zero hour. You know, how, hmm. how do they get it done? You know? Hmm. We've not bothered to sit and ask ourselves because but, apart from uh, the tools, yes, the people, the people, the third ingredient we don't see is the attitude. So okay. if we now put, but sorry, sorry, sir, you're trying I to say something. It, yes, yes, sorry to bot him. What? Oh, no. There's an attitude we have, because imagine you say, okay, there's a there's employment, there's ten slots of employment at NMPC tomorrow morning, and it's going to start for six a.m. You know Nigerians will get there for three a.m. Right. <laughs> so they, they <laughs> so I, I know that is we, it, is that attitude or motivation? Uh -huh. But I'm also looking at there's a factor that I want to bring in there, which is uh, even the the uh, should I call it platforms? I'm not mm -hmm. sure it's the right. But let's let's look at it like this. Look at the experience. Okay, let's hold yes. the experience somewhere. Look at the Nigerian Professional Football League. Let's put that somewhere. Look at uh, uh, Big Brother Nigeria. Let's put that somewhere. Mm -hmm. But you see that those are those are productions that call for an um it's not I would say unusual, but it's uh it's it's production that a scale beyond what most of us are using. Does it not mean that we still like you said, if you buy the Formula One car? Which road? Do you have the autobahn? Do you have the um, those roads to run them? But I'm saying, do are we not suffering from the roads not being there initially? Because like you said to me, uh, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, we were discussing, I said something about church not even adopting the, the live, uh, the full gamut of the live production, you know, where you have yes. people talking about Service pre pre service. They talk about what pastor is saying. Right, right. While he's talking, they've cut out some clips and say, "Okay, pastor talked about this. Pastor talked about that." You cut the summaries, and before you know, by the end of the service, you are doing interviews, asking people because that's how you will run a sports show, like pre 
uh, event, you have a setup, you're asking people questions. During the football match, uh, maybe the halftime, you're running interviews and all of that. Then after, so I think we still don't have those platforms, which um, boils down to number one, like, in, um, must the government do their part? No, I there's a, there's something that the government needs to do to make that thing work, and which is what they are trying to do now. I heard that Tony Lumelu saying on his Twitter and do that. Um, government Tony has Lumelu is not government. He's a no, no, no. Figure. I'm coming. I'm coming to something. He said government have um spoken to them about individuals and corporate organizations acquiring football clubs so that you know i'm i'm just thinking that that environment yes let's call it the environment is not there to encourage our people to scale up in their skill and even in their attitude if you understand what i mean yes oh well i'll i'll want to push push against that softly in in that you know, if, if we go back to the first uh, question, it says, you know, what's uh, keeping us, we can rephrase it to mean, well, you know, what's keeping us from attaining our best potential? Now, mm. let's, let's look at it this way. You s- uh npsl you mentioned a host of others now even even as much as we're doing you know there's there's a whole lot of setbacks as well Hmm. and and i'll give you an example you know experience where we we managed to pull shows off you know the how would i put it Oh, you were you 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 were in the back end as well as I was. You knew our yes. pitfall. You yes. know, there's there's certain situations where we didn't even get enough of the right cable. Yes. Now to open that problem further, we got cables, but we didn't get enough of the right ones. The people hmm. that went and bought those cables went to the market, saw those types picked them and came back with money, right? Hmm. Now, the people that picked those cables did not have enough cogent experience to identify the right types to use, right? Yes. That it is the of problems. Hmm. And then that's just one problem that, you know, you, you now look at, okay, you know the pitfalls we had with planning, getting people to be in the right place at the right time, the yes. sound environment not being right for certain applications, you yes. know, the, even the cabling parts, you know, yes. year before the last experience, I think was it two years back, we had to employ those uh, nice little robotic cameras on top of yeah. the drummers and everything. You know, mm. do you know how mm. do you know how many times they failed during yeah. that whole night? Yes. Can you count how many times they failed? Mm. They failed almost 30, 30 times that night. But then on air, you wouldn't even know. Mm. Because somebody kept stepping on those cables with uh and uh, these um, high heel shoes, those things yeah. cut cables like razors. Yes. So, you know, now, there... point... uh, one of our, we had, we deployed a wireless camera uh, last year. That wireless mm-hmm. camera got jammed so many times because the police were on a competing frequency as us. Yeah, yes. So, yes. you know, the point I'm trying to get at is we don't even have enough on ground. What you're seeing now that you are impressed with is uh, like, 
it, it's less than 10 percent of our full potential hmm. less hmm. than 10 percent it's wow. it's a small taste of what we can do because i had an experience in uh, ivory coast uh, this uh, last uh, nation's cup because i was privileged to be there you know where the guys that came that brought broadcast facilities there we're like, ah, oh, you're Nigerian. Ah, oh, hey, hey, how are you? Ah, well, we thought you were South African. And I was like, no. Ah, so you guys have nice vans and everything. So yeah, they brought them from Europe that, uh, you know, they came to Africa. I told them, hey, 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 guys. You know, in West Africa, Nigeria, there's EBS. They said, ah, oh, no. I said, look, I can count up to 10 units of EVS in Nigeria alone, in Lagos. He said, wow. no, impossible. One actually blurted out, impossible. Wow. And I had to bring up pictures and videos and told them and referenced the experience. I showed them pictures that, come, look, this show was done in Nigeria. And yeah. they were like, wow, like, how come they are here in Africa? with their facilities, pulling off a live world-class football production. When there's this, and I'm like, that's, I told them that's an internal problem because from my standpoint, I knew <clears throat> more of the problems that they could even, you know, uh, shake a stick at. So <clears throat> now I, I come back home and, you know, I, I'm here and, you know, where we are now, there aren't even enough, there, there isn't enough of anything. That it's tiring. You know, hmm. And that doesn't say we should give up. Rather, we should be able to do certain things. For example, you mentioned, um, first of all, government uh, involvement. And yes. I'll, I'll, I'll still come and push softly against that. In that, government involvement, I think, should be to an extent. Because now, if, if you allow government involvement, you risk making uh, the whole broadcast industry a government tool. Because now, in, even in televisions, uh, I will, would I say television, the history of media, let me open it wide. Hmm. Movies, videos moving pictures uh, at its even uh, at its earliest history were used as tools of a propaganda b manipulation yes you know in as much as they carried information their earliest employment you know were mm. used as you know propaganda to carry yes. information or to who were still going to cinemas to watch how but, the Germans were winning five yeah. days away from D-Day. You know? Yeah. So but that that shows the content. But you know, that also brought some advancements to the German uh media infrastructure, if you understand what I mean. Because I get yeah, your the, the it, Russians it, too are there, the Americans are exactly. there too. Yeah. So is that infrastructure? Because I know corporates can't really scale into those things now. Mm. The people that have that kind of money are banks. And maybe people like um, M MCN and um, all these telecoms. Um, construction people don't do those kind of things. They have the money, but they are not involved. But I'm just saying that that, that environment needs to be created for for Nigerians to level up because I know even for the experience, you know, the experience takes a lot of um leveling up. Like you said, we are punching above our weight. So I see a lot of us having to pull ourselves out of just Sunday service. You know, to do Sunday services is become routine. Do enough is once a year for us where all of us have to drag out of to pull that off and i know if we have the right infrastructure 
definitely we will pull it up. And that example I gave to you is true. Nigerians know how to level up anytime. If you check, uh, there was one time Jimovia was sharing laptops in Muzon Center. I was part of the people. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Laptop. I was part of the people that got the laptop. And I know what time we arrived. It was in Lagos and people were sleeping at the Muzon Center overnight from the east, from the north. So I know Nigerians, we, we are very resilient people. We are very um, um, dogged people when we want to, when we see the opportunities. And that's what happens when we go out there into uh, America, Europe, and all over the world. They see, they, they see some un, unusual drive from us. So like, I just wanted to chip that in to just um, help have a 360 degree uh, view of, of that whole space. But mm. I want to quickly let us go into the broadcast engineering proper now. Can you please give yes. us an overview of the industry so that we know, okay, what is broadcast engineering? You know, broadcast engineering, they, people, uh, most people don't even understand what it is. So they can't even begin to recruit for it or ask for volunteers for that department number two is administration most church media teams don't do they, they don't even see it as something to do but it's it there are key roles to be played in uh um, in an efficient i i, I, I don't think they they sorry to cut in i, I think the, the proper way to put it is they don't see it as uh a a full department that you know handles yeah. a special that has a special role on its true. own. True, that should stand on its own. True, very true. Actually, very true. Okay, so can we have it an overview of the broadcast engineering end of things? What what is expected of that person that uh, is called a broadcast engineer? What are the um like you said you studied elect elect in school and that is a solid foundation for you i've seen you so that site uh, you're fixing you said you fix cameras you fix anything the only thing i do i've not seen you fix is engine of your obi van <laughs> i know if they allow you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it, <laughs> I've I've been in some engines before, but exactly. not not the current facility I'm using. I imagine. Okay, so let's have an overview of that broadcast engineering, sir. Okay. Um. Well, broad broadcast engineering to begin with is um the application of uh engineering knowledge to carry broadcast media you know because mm. it, it is broad it's mm. like if you say what what does a doctor do or who is a doctor right basically i mean in as few words as you can put it say a doctor is somebody that you know cares for human ailments and human mm. ailments are wide and ranging so to open up what a broadcast engineer is you are in as few words as possible that broadcast media or information from you know source to target so because as it you know it's it's a wide field yes uh, now it's it's as wide as you know you can be either an audio or a video broadcast engineer. You can be an electrical uh, broadcast engineer. You can be a camera uh, setup broadcast engineer. You can be a vision control broadcast engineer. Mm. You can even be a, specialize only on a certain brand of mix. You would still qualify to be a broadcast engineer. Hmm. You know, like in my in my own case now, uh, if you ask me, uh, 
fortune sit down here and operate this evs machine i'll probably make clips for you play them back given enough time but if you give me a broken evs machine i'd probably fix it for you I'll you tell mm. me a ah, fortune this cameraman is sick he can't work today put me behind his lens i'll probably do you something you might want to pay uh half his rate for you know i'll frame a shot but if you tell me fortune uh this lens is broken i'll probably fix it for you and charge you a hundred percent money or you yep. tell me hey we're shooting in one big hall, where do I put these lenses? I might probably come up with a good answer. So as far as my experience reaches, you know, <clears throat> there's even things I wouldn't say I specialize on, but I have <clears throat> knowledge of. So, <clears throat> and in my case, I would rather like, you know what, um, you know, there's this uh, popular saying, they say, a jack of all trades, master of none. But do you mm. do you all know that saying has a complete version, which mm. people don't usually finish? It says better to be a master of some, mm. better to be a master of some than mm. master of none. I think the saying goes yeah. that because mm. if you say jack of all trades, master of none. Paints uh, a bad light on people that have gone all the way to master a few of everything, you know, hmm. than people that only know one and can't do anything else. Yes. So yeah. now, you know, as, as a broadcast engineer, you sit with, in the in a best case, you sit with. Your you sit with many hats. You hmm. put you have many hats on. You hmm. are called today to involve yourself in you know if your let's say take for example, uh, you want to deliver a convention to the world from yes. Oshogo. You know I'm not saying Oshogo is a deep dark village. I've been there before. <laughs> it's a wonderful town. But you know, Shogo is different from Lagos in that to I think to the eastern side of it, there's Mount kind you of... over a show from there. What is the first? How do you even start to plan? At each stage, you need a broadcast engineer that will answer these different questions. And today. Hmm. He might answer, where do you even get, how, what do we do? Do we stream? Is internet good there? Uh, hmm. What's better there? Do we set up uh, big cameras? Do we use small ones with wireless? Do we, what do we do? What type hmm. of audio? You know, what type of cables? How hmm. do we set these cables up? So, hmm. aha, thank you for of uploading that so you know <laughs> now you, so now that is where the broadcast engineer sits you have hmm. to be a jack of all all the trades hmm. you know you, you it's not exactly that you know as much as the audio guy does but you're not you should be hmm. sorry if I say you're not a master of all, but you should have an idea. Yes, that you should. You don't know you. You can be master of Tom. Mm -hmm. You for two thousand and seven, mm -hmm. two thousand and six, seven. Mm -hmm. You know the first uh, Big Brother Nigeria at nights. I usually sat directing. I was wow. a DSTV director, so. You know, you have to be master of some. Hmm. Hmm. Because sometimes, if if you are, because now, funny enough, the broadcast engineer is actually 
I would consider it even a leadership role. Hmm. You, you're not the producer. You're not the executive producer. You're not the line manager. But hmm. you are in a leadership role because all the certain points where the content hands over from acquisition to processing to delivery, you stand in control. Hmm. So eventually, anything that happens, you get you bear that responsibility. So that means there are certain meetings that you must attend. You and in fact, you you even have the call to tell your people, hey, let's walk away from this deal. It's not going to hmm. work. Because I remember we had a problem some years ago. We were supposed to shoot a marathon and the client was hiding information. They didn't have the technology they claimed to cover long distance, uh, to do long distance delivery. They didn't have mm. it. But they were trying to make us get into the work. So they just shove all the and say, ah, she be, ah. If you didn't have it, uh, why did you turn up? You know, it's it's it sits on the broadcast engineer's plate to actually pre-plan all this. Your job is apart from planning. Your job also entails doing the maths, doing the mm. hard job of knowing things ahead of mm. people. You, if you tell me one particular camera model, I more or less must have an idea of what that camera can and cannot do. Sure. A broadcast engineer's job. And apart from that, it it's even spreads further. You are the you are the man on ground. You are the first one to touch the wire safely, yes. if I may add. You are the last person to leave after mm. everyone has gone. You're the first to arrive. You're the first mm. to switch on. You're mm. the one that makes sure this mixer works, that camera works, that wire connects that camera to its CCU. That yes. uh, microphone delivers to the mixer. Are they mm. in sync? Are they yes. latent? Is this mm. working with us? Yes. You know, I had a situation uh, last year in Worry. The uh, front of house guys connected their neutral to where one of the phases should be. How nobody hmm. died there is a, is a living miracle. I will always attest wow. to because when our guys touched the body of our facilities, they got electric shocks. Wow. from the hosts, not even us. We'd gone through, and all this, we were live. Through wow. all this, we were live. My you God. know, you're the one that gets the call. Fortune, this our van is delivering power. Yes. You know? So that's, that's the As high the throne. Problem. Sorry? I said, as though you created the problem. As though, yes. That's, that's the responsibility mm. you bear. Same mm. thing, like I said, you know, like a uh, doctor. If uh, anybody passes on, on your watch, you yes. bear the responsibility. It's your, it's you your know? Resp True. Imagine handling live cable, everything. You have to be the one to tell everybody, hey, give me gloves. Wear the glove. Check this, mm. check that. While you mm. have a live show, this this was about eleven thirty at night, uh, and there was live electricity everywhere up to where your dish was. Wow! So, you know, such such is the the high on and any. You can't afford to be not serious. 
okay. about this sort of work. It is very important. And the way it is in Nigeria now, there are, if if I was to count broadcast engineers, trust me, my one one hand will still have uh, people left. <laughs> There, in one hand is more than enough. You yes. cannot gather up to ten in a room in this country. Wow. And now, if if we say okay, the if we add go back to where we were where we started this uh, forum, you know, yes, it's a people problem. That that is one of the big issues in the people problem. Hmm. We've not gone to the tools problem. Yes. We've not gone to the attitude problem. We're still on the people problem here. Wow. So that's, okay. that's Thank my you. view to what a broadcast engineer is. Thank you. So, I know you've been at this for almost 20 years now. And there must be something you are doing right that I'm very sure you have also noticed that others are doing wrong. You've mentioned a few things. I, I, I know you, you have a lot to say about it, which is attitude. Um, you've talked about the education because I think a lot of us do not, not um, research enough. We do not read enough. We do not expose ourselves to knowledge enough. Like you said, if somebody says, uh, this is the kind of camera we have, for this production, as a broadcast engineer, you should be able to understand what they're saying and tell them these are the pros, these are the cons, this is why it will work, this is why it will not work, and all of that. So how do, do what kind of um, attitude, I, I don't think attitude sums it up, what kind of um, training or exposure and attitude do you think make up a proper broadcast engineer? Because I know you must have exposed yourself to a lot of things. How do you do them? And how can people also begin to do those things? So that in the next, let's say, five, we are saying count number of broadcasts. Maybe you will use you to join you. Do you understand what that means? Mm. Yeah, uh, it's, it's actually a very good question of which... Even even I myself have how would I put it? I've never like sat myself down and thought, okay, Mr. Fortune, because you know, sometimes there's this thing where do do you think in your which which language do you think in according to think, the situation? I think in two languages. In two languages. <laughs> Yeah, but I think in English more. Okay, me sometimes. Do you know, I I think in Yoruba sometimes. Yeah, I, if if you don't think in Yoruba sometimes, you won't get it. So you have to yeah, think in Yoruba. Your your native language, kind of. I, I'm from a Kwaibom state, by the way, and I was born and bred in Lagos. So sometimes Yoruba kind of comes to the fore. Especially when native language. In terms of, you know, an attitude thing. How how can can attitude be shaped? From my experience, after a certain age, you can't shape attitude. Very true. Very true. You you can force behavior. Yes. But you can't shape attitude. Hmm. So the the thing now is, you know, um, how how do we you know, change our would would we say attitude is even the right word? I'd say approach or response to the problem yes. of uh, you know, getting uh people to be better in broadcast yep. engineering. Yep. I think we have to step, uh, put a step of all and A, 
how do we bring people in to be broadcast engineers? Mm. You know, because now we go back, you, you mentioned something about, you know, motivating uh, uh, environment. Yes. A lot of people, first off, first off, they're in survival mode. Yes. So you have to make broadcast engineering appeal to them, first of all, as a career they hmm. can love. Yes. Not get paid well, you know, they hmm. can love. Because for hmm. me, I'm in, I, I, I'm in one of eight professions I believe I, I, I love. Wow. You know, I wouldn't I love because look, tomorrow if I'm not doing broadcast engineering, you give me a car and tell me, yeah. Fortune, take all this apart. Take your time. Here are all the tools. Break this card. I'll I'll enjoy doing it. You mm. know. If you give me a camera tomorrow and tell me, yeah, Fortune, this camera is broken. Uh, can you have a look at it for me? I'll enjoy that too. You know, if you tell me, uh, Fortune, we're going to see this brand new television coming to Nigeria. It's new tech I've seen before. Yeah. I will pay for petrol. We'll fuel my mm. car. We will go together and enjoy the, the whole day breaking down wow. that TV, looking at it, you know, seeing mm. what it brings. So, mm. you know, there was a day you... First, uh, uh, tripod. Sorry, you fix our tripod. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, I remember. That tripod was sitting down in the store for about six years. Until oh really? Yes, until some. Uh, I think it was Sunday. Engineer Sunday in house on the road. Yeah, that yeah, said, yeah, I remember. I think I remember it, Sunday. You remember that tripod, right? The yeah. one that uh does put up and pedestal down, and some somehow you got it fixed. Man, I doff my heart for you, sir. You know these things. <laughs> so you know. Okay, come uh, and 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 now, how how do you bring these people in? Because first you have to identify mm. what makes people tick, what makes them uh want to do this. For me, mm. I what love gets this. them excited about it. Yeah, you know what okay. what the prospects are. Now you now have to take another step back. You need to have these, then make it appealing, mm. then train them to appreciate mm. what they are doing. Not not just train them, train them properly. Train them to mm. see, hey guy, this what this thing you do. Mm. You you know, it's different from. Sometimes I say this job is like, you know, a doctor's job. Doctors get thanks. Mm. You know that some people walk up to doctors. Hey, man, thank you for saving my baby. Oh, thank you for saving my wife. Thank you for, ah, doctor, take something. Mm. We mm -hmm. broadcast engineers, we don't get thanks. So our thanks mm -hmm. is personal. When mm -hmm. I see a job I've worked on go to air, and I'm like, mm. yes, I did that privately to myself. Mm. Or I I do side eye to my colleague and like, oh boy, you see that that picture is nice. So he's sharp guy. You know? Yes. That's that's where mm. that's that's the top of it for me. For yes. viewers across the world, hey, you know, I, I wave my hand. Mm. So this is the truth of it. Anything else, you're glorifying this job. It is an essential mm. job nonetheless. You know, and yeah. if you say, you now come to the, what am I doing right? Believe me, as yes. many victories you've seen me claim, there's also been losses as well. There's also been those days where, you know, you fold your hands behind your back, take your lashing, and mm. you 
walk out of Oga's office vowing to do better. You know, there's also been those rough yes. days with some clients that their demands have never ended. And this is what you have to yes. learn. The broadcast engineer has to learn to take. This is part of the how that handling development, how you handle pressure. You know, hmm. you, you have to be able to handle hmm. pressure because a lot depends on you. Not not even a hmm. lot. Some people's income may depend on so child schooling may depend on your success. So mm -hmm. you don't carry this with simplicity. You you carry this with all seriousness. Because you know, in, in developing a broadcast engineer, it takes a a lot of knowledge. How do you handle and you know, funny enough, a broadcast engineer's job isn't that hmm. complex. Hmm. You know, it, you, you, you could actually do broadcast engineering if you don't even study elect elect. Yes, it's required. Yes, it might come into play. But you don't exactly have hmm. to be a core elect elect engineer. You could know hmm. a bit some electronics principles. You could you could go back and read up on how things work: sensors, transducers, elements, Foreign. different things. You, you may go back to read those. You may even fall into this field. Think. Inputs helps your uh, yep. will to acquire knowledge. How open are you to new knowledge? How open are you to unlearn things? How open are you to making sure mm -hmm. 90 degrees is 90 degrees? How open are you to learn how much light is needed to make sure your picture appears properly at the other end of the world? Mm -hmm. You know? Hmm. You need to be able to accept hmm. this knowledge. And training a broadcast engineer takes quite some time. So it's not as if it's a, an investment that, hey, one company will come, throw a million uh, dollars at it, and boom, out comes uh, tens and tens of broadcast engineers. It, it's gradual. Oh. It takes... Uh, attitude shaping it takes response shaping it takes uh uh how do i put it to get on properly that's you have to learn to give a hundred and ten percent all the time because okay take Take somebody hmm. from this side of the world, you know. He first has to unlearn how to come late, drop that from his life, hmm. then pick up coming early. Mm -hmm. Because if I was to pick mm -hmm. uh, uh, anybody who would work with me, first of all, is the attitude I look at. You know, what are you? Hmm. A team player, a loner? Yeah, of course, there's places where I could use people who like to work alone. There's places, but a team player works better every day. You know, yeah. I've trained somebody who is hmm. a security man into one of the world's best vision control guys. All it needed was his attitude. Wow. All. Yes. This guy cannot command hmm. uh, English properly, but sit him down. Behind uh, cameras in a broadcast environment, mm -hmm. and this guy will give you top class pictures. Go and watch uh, wow. uh, Ivory Coast semi final in uh, this thing, 
this uh, last Nations Cup, this guy was, I, I knew four cameras this guy was handling. And he did it just to show those Oibos, you can't come to Africa and push us around. And those guys were, were like mm. mouth wide open. You know? So, wow. for that, that example alone only serves to prove, look, mm. if you are able to open up, accept knowledge, plant yourself in yes. this uh, environment and be ready to attack problems mm. as they come and grow with it. You will make a good broadcast engineer. And then tools-wise, if we talk about tools and a, a broadcast engineer's tools, mm, I'd say it's a, it's a half and half situation because a broadcast engineer, you can work with you know, learn those ones. An environment has to be created where you will get tools. Not like you sit and then nothing is handed to you. Because even at that, hmm. we we spoke about you know the media department being hmm. like a sub department under another department whereas they should be independent mm. you know and then remember when we spoke uh earlier on not not on this forum when you know mm. uh we were talking about um if you wanted to uh transport yourself you could use a car right yeah if you wanted to transport yourself and carry yes. a heavy load mm. You, I recall. You can use a car, but then again, you'd be better off using a truck. You know, same thing. You need specialized hmm. units to handle specialized tasks. You know, in and in the church environment, in church media, not yet in CNN, no spiritual messages you're handling messages that carry power that changes people's lives would yes. you want to put that in the hands of volunteers no i mean not with all due respect to volunteers i i mm. mean would you want to put that in the hand of somebody that is willing but not fully trained to carry yes. messages of high importance you know, I'll, I'll give you uh, an Igbo proverb that says, you don't put hot coals in a child's hand and tell them, carry it carefully. Yeah. Because in the old days, people, mm. if you can't make fire, you send your child to the next door neighbor. Tell them, hey, can I borrow some charcoal from you to start fire mm. in my compound? So that child you sent, knows mm. the gravity of what he's doing because if he doesn't carry well <laughs> there's problem he might hurt himself then again you might not eat being the parent yes. so the same i mm. touch me that information to the intended target to land with the intended purpose you know I think a broadcast uh, engineering or the media departments has to be higher enabled and given much more responsibilities, much more than before. And yes, a bit mm. of autonomy. And that autonomy as well comes with plenty of responsibilities and expectations given. So... You know, that's my summary of what it takes to bring out, you know, people in broadcast mm. engineering. And and then again, okay. if, if I may add, it, it, it will take a conscious effort to actually build, you know, and it to actually build uh, a team of people, you know, because it's not just about broadcast engineers alone. It's about 
your creative department as well. The directors, the yes. vision. Yeah. Every, it, yes. Everybody has to step forward, you know, like a team. You know, even broadcast engineers. Yes. It's, it's like a football team, uh. you know. We're here just talking about one person in an in a multi-person setup. So as much as you want to push, you know, the yes. broadcast engineer forward, you have to remember there's other members of the team that's responsible for broadcast here as well. Okay, uh. you may go ahead. I, I see you want to say All something. All right, sir. Okay. Um. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask about the, yes. I wanted to ask about the resources that you subscribe to to keep you on the cutting edge. That's one question. Before we now go to you, remember our talk at the beginning of the forum. Before I ask yeah. that we um take to start. So we'll quickly go into that also so that um we can wrap up um in about twenty thirty minutes. Sir. So let's okay. talk about what, how, do you, how do you keep your mind sharp? How do you stay on the cutting edge? Um, it's, it's interest. You, you have to take interest in what you do every time. You keep ahead, keep yeah. abreast. Fortunately, yeah. Uh, information is no longer as hidden or as hard to reach as it was, say, 10 years ago. Yeah. 10 years ago, getting some key information oh. was really tough. Even going further back, 20 years ago, we were in the dark ages. You could not get any information concerning oh. anything. But now, as much as it's as oh. easy as typing the name of uh, what you want to have knowledge on. I tell you, by the time you scroll down the yeah. search page, page one of the Google results, you must yes. have a direction into where you're going. So, but then, uh. you know, that's uh, number one. And then two, you need to be heavily engaged, hands-on engaged. Because oh. you can yeah, you get your your hands have to touch wood. You have to, you know, look at practices, practice. If you don't see something to do, create. You know, find like minded people, develop yourself and if you don't, you cannot sit lazy one minute. And yeah. and then you you Trust mustn't it. see it. You mustn't see this uh, as work. Because it's hmm. that is also another key area. A, a broadcast engineer has to be the key attitude that, to have. Yeah, hmm. it's you mustn't see this as work. If once you see it as work. Uh, find something else to do <laughs> you, you just take broadcast engineering as okay hmm. Hmm. You just be a jack of that one trade but go look for something else to do because if, if you don't have interest in this you can't really go far because everything will just be an obstacle in your way you know right and yeah because for me In that sometimes hmm. I go to through a facility, I'm I'm open to handling questions. Like somebody was uh, busy doing an interview earlier on today with uh, a potential hmm. employer, so he called me and like ah, ah chief how far um please oh somebody is going to interview me I need pointers and I'm like okay you know what. Uh, where do you know the person? Do you know the place? Do you know the job? Do you know what they do? And he said, I really doesn't know much that somebody. Just... 
I went on the internet, Googled his employer, everything. From there, I got the studio size, got the type of equipment they use, gave him that information. I think he may have a job right now. Wow. So, you know, that's the wow. sort of step ahead you need to do as a broadcast mm. engineer. You need to be hands-on. You need to be... Mm. You know, and huh. I'm 47 years now. I I think of sometimes I think of my 28, 25 year old self and like man fortune. Because <laughs> <Huh. laughs> sometimes, because <laughs> sometimes if I look at my drive back then, I scare myself because huh. I'm like wow, you really pushed a lot in your younger uh, earlier years than now even now i've wow. learned to take a few steps back yes experience wow. is there but i'm considering huh. guys that are incoming that are at my age level then you know huh. i want to look at them and now say hmm you know what this is the kind of hunger you need to have this is the kind of thing uh, you need to be ready for. You need to be ready to put on that glove, handle everything uh, to a big hammer. Uh, All the way from using a microscope uh, to work. Interesting. Which shows you the broad spectrum of things one has had to handle. Be ready for anything. I mean, even sometimes I've sat in positions where I didn't expect myself at the back of the team, just because at the end of the day, you as a broadcast engineer are part of a team and your job is the visual impact. Most people don't look at it that, hey, my job here is not only to make sure the viewer sees what the camera is seeing, my job is to make sure they and a they enjoy it, b they come away with something. They come away with mm. that information, that key thing you need to put in their head. They need to come away with that and see. Mm. They need to come back next time. Then d, as the case as world economics dictates now, they need to pay. Before TV yes. used to be free, TV is seriously milked mm. media. Everybody gets their sustenance from it these True. days. You'll be, you'll be shocked how much, you know, people mm. are, you know, paying for content. People pay mm. like uh, one Netflix uh, movie I watched two days ago. That thing cost me 18 gig of data. That's how much in Naira terms. Wow. It's almost 5k. So, <laughs> yes. you know, people are paying 5k True. to watch 18 gig of an HDR movie because uh, I don't want to watch the movie uh, with all these pirate downloads. So, you know, broadcast engineer on your head lies mm. that very thorny crown of responsibilities. So that's that's mm. me in a nutshell. You know, I, I make myself better by being competitive, being men like I'm I'm ready for any, and any challenger. Sure. Come today, Moduro mo Bafoy. Okay. Understand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. All right, so let's quickly, yeah. yeah there was a point I wanted to add to um, the things you said. I wanted to say broadcast engineers also make sure that people don't don't um 
you know how somebody is singing eh? have you have you listened to somebody sing and you feel pain from the person's voice mm. as in you are you are, you are you are feeling the pain so it's something that broadcast engineers do they don't make people feel pain from watching content so you know you can be watching a match and the audio is bad or the video is checking or something you make sure that it's seamless you turn on your tv you watch you turn it off you have no clue what happened in the back end it's when there's problems that you begin to uh, try to figure yeah. out what went wrong on the broadcast so your job is to make sure it's seamless it's perfect yeah mm -hmm. all right I wanted to quickly go to the strategies for optimizing audiovisual quality. Because that's the most selected option from everyone. Yes. Uh, we um, need to give that due that we attention. Okay, so okay. let's quickly get... Yeah. Um. Okay, I was speaking on that earlier. And... Yes. Yeah, I came down to reiterate again, more like start from the beginning. Because uh, when yes, we started, we had uh, yeah, yeah. very few uh, attendees. So now, yeah. um, to start again, first of all, you, you have to uh, look at what, um, what you're doing. You know, the, the first is recognize you need to send a message. You know, look at your medium, your the method by which you will manipulate that uh, medium and carry the message forward. You know, it, it might, huh. from the old days ago, it just very that beyond that venue alone loudspeakers are not going to cut it you know you need to be very efficient with what you're doing so hence comes the question you know what are you delivering you have to ask the first question, what are you delivering? Can we use a scenario? Can we use a project that you've worked on? Let me... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do, first of all, the experience. Let's uh, hmm. apply to a uh, an, an event we're all familiar with. I'll take the experience okay, because so on my planning notes, you know, the... Hmm. The questions, first of all, were, were supposed to put an event on air on channel, uh, that's uh, 198, that's the... Five, four, one, yes. Yeah, that's the Hallelujah the, channel, the, the festival channel on DSTV. Yes. So what is yes. the event? It's the... that ask myself okay what first answers was a the experience uh an event how many hours um it's going to last pretty much the whole night you start from the evening yeah. till morning so you know yes. those questions aha what's going to be the point of it all It's to take is to celebrate uh an evening of praise and worship you know worldwide okay fine huh. a lot of people need to see this then what do they want to see a concert pretty much okay fine and in between there's going to be interviews there's going to be uh, inserts, there's going to be graphics, there's going to be lyrics, there's going to be live music, live bands, live videos, lots of eyes. I mean, imagine, I'd imagine there were over 30, 40,000 people in there. 
and you're giving the people a camera. They're, they're not getting a fair deal because the people there see all angles. They see everything. They hear everything. The people at home are going to get 10 angles and very limited audio dynamics. Mm. So you have to, that's part of the what. Mm. How do you do this? What's their best experience? You can't do 4K. Standard definition mm. of 720 would be, you'd even be, how would I put it? Uh, shortchanging them. So it has to be 1080i video because 1080 progressive yes. would be too heavy for Africa's current transmission capacity. You can't put uh, progressive on DSNG. Then again, live streaming would be a problem because the issue is if you gather a lot of people in one space, the nearby masts, huh. the nearby radio masts would handle so much traffic, they'd slow down because what they do, uh, part of what they do, they call it time division. They will listen to your phone. In that millisecond, the attention is on another phone. Imagine them handling if we go back to earlier, like 30, 40,000 people, that means they have to handle 30, 40,000 phones under a second every time for 12 hours. So streaming, unless you have a direct VSAT link, like uh, Starlink, which, I mean, we only started having last year, you know? So streaming was out of the question. We're still under the water. Uh. So now your target uh. is 1080i SDI video. Because uh. your current facility only delivers SDI, not HDMI. HDMI is too complex. So now you have your watts. You want to deliver 1080i HD high definition video. How many channels of sound? You could do Dolby sound, but then you have to think of your receivers, uh, your viewers decoder. It only has two channels. So that pretty much covers the what? HD video, two channels audio. Now, the other question, the other important one you need to ask yourself is the why. Because guess what? Everyone there, hmm. Hmm. you're one person asking yourself why. Your first answer would be 30 or 40,000 people are there. There's a higher number outside that couldn't make it there, that it's of importance to. Because they will pay money too to view it. So you have to give it to them because of next time. So that's the why. Because there are other viewers outside that venue. You want your message to get to them. So that covers the why to be as quick on that subject. Now the when. The when starts from a certain time of day to the other. Your when should allow you time for you to plan how you will set up, what you will set yeah. up which now we go to the question of the how what do you need do you put your big lenses at a certain position why okay you want to have a close up of the subject you also want maybe if he does a very special dance you want to see a full shot you want to see the uh, choristers. You want to see the backup singer. You want to see the drummer when he's in the spirit or when he does a solo. You want to see the guitarist. You want to see percussion. So that, how do you place your lenses? How do you place your mics? How do you work out who goes first, who goes last? 
How do you work out how you talk to the cameraman? How do you work out uh, how the cameraman talk to you? How does the director do that as well? How does the audio guy speak to the guys at the front of house processing the venue's audio? Because the venue audio, the sound makeup is different. You have to bring all these elements together, all these people, and ask, you know, these questions, answer them, get, get them to interface. So once you do that, you now uh, sort out huh. who it's going to. And this who is from, the first person is the satellite guy. He collects from you everything you've managed to cook up, send, puts it on a satellite, sends through. So that's the short of it. You know, five elements, the what, why, huh. when, how, and who. Now, huh. we go back to the right. first question. How do you optimize these different uh, departments? First is the what, uh. you know. Therein, you answer the question of, A, what cameras do I employ, you know, to get that job, bring in who's at the end. Because now, questions may be ringing. Hey, what type of cameras? Why do I need a Sony HSC 300. Why don't I use a JVC? Those small handheld ones. Why are they different? This is where you need to answer those questions that come on. These Sony HSC 300s can handle uh, these big uh, Canon 72X lenses. They're the ones that make sure Whenever somebody is singing, you can see, you can count the hairs on their beard. You can see the uh, beads of sweat rolling off their face. It's so, so clear. This brings the viewer close, even funny enough, closer than the people in the venue. When they feel a moment, you know, sure. you, are, you are in that shot. Because at the end of the day, you're bringing in the yes. viewers closer than the audience. When the subject feels a moment, you want a really close shot of their face. You want to see their expression, their posture, you know, how they feel. The sound also plays an important part. At that point, you cannot lose it. You cannot have any interference. So you need to select what camera works. And why you need a box lens. They call them box lenses because from oh. one end of TBS, you can make somebody's face without getting in front of the rest of the audience at the venue. You can get a really tight shot of the head from way back. And these lenses are optimized for broadcast. Not like they're different from your... Uh, camera lens is the one you snap with. Same principle, but different. Because of a certain thing inside the camera head called a CCD, uh, called a charge-coupled device. They come in different sizes, but even those ones have a separate history of why they are different sizes. Because the industry has a, you know, I think something why they are that way today because if you look at cars most cars their wheels have the same length apart trucks are a bit wider because of their weight or you nobody has bothered to ask mm, why are cars that wide why can't they be closer like keke and let us all move there's a history there's a science behind everything same thing with your ccds in cameras 
there's a reason why some of them are the size they are. Because for broadcast lenses, they deal with half inch or less than half inch or one third inch CCDs. That's the area of uh, one third of an inch by one third of an inch. That's that's smaller than one side of your Maggi cube. That's about smaller than. Meanwhile, your camera is the one you snap with, the one you snap pictures with. Have CCDs that's four times, six times bigger. All because there's a way you have to treat light. Light shines. larger surface or you need more light broadcast cameras the designers knew hey sometimes you need to shoot at night or in very bright sunlight meanwhile cameramen have the option of not even shooting at all if there is no light or they light artificially so hence you as the broadcast engineer you choose what lens goes where? On what choice of camera? Of course, I mean, you could hook up a big lens to that small JVC handheld, but you need plenty. And trust me, there's a reason why people don't do that because equipment already exists that allows you to optimize your choices. So you huh. sneak cables all the way to your vision controller. He sits. That person will judge, hey, this stage, mm, the light is too blue, the light is too red, and tries to balance those colors into one sweet event that everyone can enjoy. So, you know, and that's in the input all together. But we're, we're on the subject of, you know, strategies. How do you optimize? It's not hmm. about the putting together. It's also about testing what fits, throwing away yeah. what doesn't, hmm. making sure it works, putting everything hmm. together. You have to rehearse. You have to know, hey, this works. That's why if you notice some of our guys, uh, they come out of the van. Even I do that. They take a snapshot of the whole place. Hmm. You know, and we go back into the van, sit and like, mm, you know what? Let's use this color temperature. This color temp works now. This one mm, does not. Mm, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. Mm. And we, we move from there. So, you know, that's optimizing. Optimizing mm. also means you need to get the best features into your picture makeup. Because we're talking about uh, HD pictures here. It will be to get the best. The focus must everything must be quality. Now you you the question comes up: How do you know what is quality? Huh. You understand a a picture may be nice and clear but uh, you will find out that it may be off color hmm. or the wrong wrong picture so you need to know what makes what work in that instance so that's where vision control guys sit that's where hmm. even the broadcast engineer still inserts as well because he is the one in charge of the color He's the one that says, okay, A, all these colors match. B, they are of the highest quality and saturation. C, they contain all the chroma elements needed for to put this internationally. D, the black level is fine. Anybody who captures this picture later in an edit suite is able to edit out all the in. within that thing. 
use it for a further experience later. So that's, you see already three points. The broadcast engineer is inserting. Then after all this, the uh, cameras are now sent to your mixer. Then again, you ask yourself, hey, why do we need to have a big sunny mixer? Uh -uh. Ah, Lilo, uh, Tricaster, Kekereni, ah, Lilo, uh, Data Video, ni, Ashalati, Lo, Sony. You have to use a Sony. You have to use a grass value of equivalent capacity. You have to, if, a, if Data Video makes a mixer, because, uh, sorry, a mixer of the same capacity and quality, trust me, people will start to buy it and use it in these situations because most times people wonder oh is it because it's got many keys nope it's because of the whole design because the guys that made these uh, big mixers no okay you know uh, linux linux is a sort of operating system that doesn't fail. It doesn't, not like Windows, that if you run out of RAM, it fails. If your hard drive crashes, it fails. Linux can be stable and can be scaled down to an extent that it can run on 2 KB of RAM. Run on processing as low as 512 megahertz and still be happy. So, Data videos don't have that. They don't have that capacity. Hence, and then these things, they can handle three, four channels of graphics. You can put up uh, three, four images, picture in picture on that thing to create an experience. So that's where you start putting in all the elements that add quality. And that's just video alone. There's the audio, you know. They have uh, Sennheiser mics. They have front-end processing uh, for mixers. They are working in 98 uh, kilohertz sample with 90, yeah, 96 uh, kilohertz sample rate. So all this has to boil down to the quality of your signals. And... Who's to guide that quality? Once again, it still comes down to an audio or broadcast engineer who specializes in audio. So all of these additions help you to optimize. And once you optimize, you, you're basically going to start getting the best of every world. Because, and then, you know, strategies for optimizing. We've so far been talking about how do you get pure signals in. You have to put in strategies, which means, first of all, apart from getting the what, why, where, how to who, you need to set up a system by where you plan. Planning has to be a big part, a big makeup of how you get things done. Because for, for content like that, I mean, if you look at the uh, Americans in Hollywood, how they get those nice pictures and everything, a major part of their strategy of getting clean, clear pictures is planning. They plan everything. They plan, uh -huh. check the results, go back, change the plan, do it again, run the plan, check the end results. If something is not right, they go back, change the plan. And then, you know, planning itself takes a lot of, uh, how would I put it, uh, information. You need information all the way. It's important you get as much input as possible. 
with a clear idea of getting your goals in mind. Huh. Then after planning, you engage. Engagement means, okay, you plan to put 10 cameras in place. Part of the plan is what shots do they take? Has anybody done a story to frame these shots? Has anybody done homework to determine how do how how are those shots dynamic? Are they shots that zoom in, zoom out, pan, tilt? You know? Are they shots that change color? Are they shots that, you know, have vectoring built in? What what why are those shots? That's part of the plan. Then you now engage, you test those shots, you cut in between. If you don't have real live shots, go back to examples where you've employed those shots before. Go back to have somebody draw a storyboard. You know that, okay, I like this shot. I like this shot. How do we open this show? You know, engage, come back, have everybody sit at the round table. Hey, this is what, this is the plan. Uh, okay, we are going to Oshobo. How do we engage with Oshobo? Ah, Oshobo, the uh, place we have, there's grass on one side, there's sand on one side. How do you engage that terrain? How do you interact with it? Maybe there's a hill on one side as a backdrop. Your shot isn't so empty when you cover, when you go to a wide shot of the whole stage you come back change change that whole plan that okay this is what this is the suggestion we carry this is what we found have some people go forward so after engaging you test you test your plan uh. test the plan watch your results do you like your results yes what can you improve about your results this, 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 this. Oh, we want this delivery to be better. One thing, one thing. Ah, instead of a full wide shot of the whole place, ah, let's have a drone shot. What does the drone do? When does it take off? When does it cover? Do you need a nighttime shot? Do you need a daytime shot? What do you need off the drone? What will it add? You know, down to the cost of the drone guy. If the drone guy is too costly and doesn't add much, you strike it. So it prevents somebody from calling one drone guy. Ah, after you do it, pay me something. Ah. Or somebody goes, ah, it's a drone. We want it. You know, that's testing your plan after. Mm -hmm. Refine your plan. Once you have a final plan, it's next to the setup and rehearsal stage. Because that's that's like a final engagement, a final type of engagement you test so after that you set up setting up rehearse you deliver trust me by the time these steps are put in place what mm. you have is a method that works that allows you to always deliver the best every time because this allows you to work out the kinks and I best advise it's done A, in a group. B, it's done in a group together at the same time. Because it allows everyone to work organized. You don't work in... Because... And one of the things that is a pitfall in the way we work this side of the world is most people like working in isolation because... This is how it always starts. It starts. After Pastor approved something, somebody will meet him in the corridor. Or somebody goes to Pastor Kola, gets something approved. Then Pastor Kola hmm. will come, ah, Pastor, let's uh, add this to it. Hmm. Pastor will approve. Okay, add it. It's hmm. become a side plan, aside the main plan. So and he has the capacity out, the main yeah, plan. It, it has a backing, but it's not within the full plan. So you add and and yeah. now that's just one plan. 
that's set to converge at some point and derail everything. You find out everybody's ready and next thing some two guys will come. Uh, pastor said uh, we should do uh, coverage of uh, some artists before they go and perform. Uh -huh. Where do we fit them into the rundown? And it becomes a problem because what they're doing, as isolated as they are, carries as much weight as the whole show itself. Because yes. people from the top have approved it. But mm -hmm. they should not shy away from working together. Sources of why people always look at... Uh, guys from multi-choice and say, hey, man, you guys, uh, you, you try, you, you deliver. Because so we developed a way of working together as a hmm. full group hmm. in that, I, for me, I, I can't work without passing information to at least eight people. Camera yeah. supervisor gets my idea. Uh, if I gets my idea, uh, the audio guy uh, Ayo Adeife gets my idea I get feedback Ah, fortune this won't work we're taking off tomorrow uh, yeah. come this 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 so the strategy again is not even from what I mentioned not even planning planning together everybody must be on the same page yeah. like understand and then the, the planning should be before, middle, after. Because mm -hmm. after you're done, you review. What did yes. we do well? What did we not? You know. Okay. Uh, we've, we've overshot our time a lot, but there's a very, very key part of this whole discussion that must be had before we leave tonight. I want you to help mm -hmm. us um, iron it out in just about five minutes and that is training how do we get trained for uh this role you mentioned something about something you have put together and um, we were talking about the schooling and the um, um enrollment as far as nigeria is concerned now we don't have anything like that and the opportunities that are available abroad so I want you to quickly help us fit all of that into five minutes so we can wrap up. And mm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, for training, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's it's a hands-on thing. But yes. then that, that does not come without its uh, necessary forward prep, you know, explaining things to certain individuals, then get their hands into it. Because at, at this point, Apart from it being uh, we do need uh, individuals to get their hands dirty, so to speak, on as much as we can on almost every aspect. The rest, as, as, as I see broadcast engineering, is something they will have to learn on the job. Thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. So let me appreciate everyone for joining. If you've learned something, you can drop a chat. Um, maybe just say thank you. I want to thank um, the people that put this together for us, especially my brother, brother Jura, and our guests tonight. Excellent, excellent delivery. Then I want to thank Consoles, Consoles Studios, wonderful brother that uh, gave us the Zoom platform to use free of charge. Then thank you, everyone. If you're not in the community, um, you should join the community. I believe there is something for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Amos. Thank you so much, brother Israel. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will continue the discussion in the community.